Let's roll this. It's Sports Rage. I am Gabriel Morenzi, the pimps, the players, the hustlers, the people, the bust them, and everybody else in between. The postseason has begun, literally and figuratively. We've got an elimination game going on right now as we speak. The Miami Heat do it again, Britney Spears style. As uh, the Miami Heat once again crash the party without Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero. And I got to put my hand up, and uh, I will say, yeah, that's me. In which so many people in the modern media, and specifically in like the political landscape and in cable TV, it's nice to be them because they're never wrong, right? No, like they could be 1 million percent wrong, but they'll just spin it and never admit uh, that they were wrong. Uh, I will admit that I was wrong. I've, I've talked, you know, I've never really thought much of Tyler Hero. He's okay. You know what I mean? I, like I said, I never really thought of him as a, like a top tier type of player, but he hit that three point shot the other night to help us win our bet to go over the number. And tonight, no Jimmy Butler. The dude had a triple-double. So, whatever. I'm an idiot. He's good. I was wrong. And uh, I admit it. I mean, what, what can you say? I mean, the kid stepped up, and uh, he delivered tonight, man, in a big-time way. He carried that team. Triple-double. And, of course, though, in, in typical fashion, this is the karma of me. The prop was over 24.5 points scored for him. And I was like, yeah, you know what? He'll go off tonight. I got faith in him. And he scores 24 but I can't rip him. He had a triple-double. It's all oh, he sucks. He only got 24 points. No, he had a triple-double. So uh, the Miami Heat uh, advance, and uh, the game stayed under the number, although there was a late push that nearly got there, actually. Shout-out to everybody joining us on SiriusXM, Channel 159. This is Sports Rage. The pimps, the players, the hustles, the people, the bust, and everybody else in between. Let's roll. The Brandon Night Freak Show has begun. Sacramento and the Pelicans have begun. 18-13 for the Kings uh, right now. There's a 4.06 left in the first quarter of play. Of course, Zion is not playing in this basketball game. We're on the Pelicans on the money line, but I went bigger on the over, 211. And the uh, the current in-game total right now is 208 and a half because, of course, it is because nothing uh, ever comes easy, does it? So 208 and a half right now is the in-game total. The Pelicans are still one and a half uh, – it's a, it's a one and a half point spread right now. It's basically a pick em, uh, as um, the Pelicans are on the free throw line. We're going to break it down. It's our postseason extravaganza uh, this evening. Steve Merrill bats leadoff, steps up and in the kicks it with us. We'll talk NBA basketball, Major League Baseball with Steve. As long as we're on the diamond uh, right now, I did play San Diego and Toronto to go over eight and a half runs uh, tonight. The Los Angeles Dodgers take on the Mets. And anytime the Mets and or the Yankees, but the Yankees aren't at uh, Dodger Stadium very often. Uh, but, you know, the Mets are once a year. You know, the Mets, it's always, a, you know, an electric atmosphere, old-school 80s rivalry. You know, we don't really have a lot of rivalries in sports anymore, to be honest. College we do, but pro sports, there's some. But, you know, they some of them have faded, so to speak. You know, the Red Sox and Yankees, and there's, there's rivalries. But the Dodgers and uh, Mets used to be a thing. Right, East Coast, West Coast, like the Rap Wars was the same time. <laughs> the, you know, the Bloods and the Crips, East Coast, West Coast, and all that. And, um, you know, you, you had Daryl Strawberry and Doc Gooden, and, and there were some epic throwdowns between the Dodgers and the Mets in the playoffs. And, in fact, the movie Bad Lieutenant, not the, uh, the, the crappy remake one that I've never seen, and I'm not going to watch with Nicolas Cage, but the real Bad Lieutenant with Harvey Keitel, of course, was about the Dodgers and Mets playing each other in a playoff series, and sometimes I feel like Harvey Ke Keitel in that movie, <laughs> to be honest. But that's that's another story. So yeah, Steve Merrill steps up and in the Rage Red at Cam Stewart uh, in the house. Uh, we've got Rob Vino uh, joining us. We're going to talk NBA playoffs, UFL football with Rob. Tony Finn, straight from uh, the deserts of uh, Area 51 in the Badlands of Nevada. Lou Gamblu.com in the house. Uh, no UFC this week. Uh, we'll get into the Haney and Garcia stuff, not with Lou, because Lou's smart enough not to pay attention to that circus. Like, there's, you know, like anybody in boxing, I'm just going to throw this out here right now. This wasn't a pre planned take, and they're the non pre planned ones are always the best ones. But anybody that is a professional boxer or that is in boxing, that ever criticizes 
one of these stupid Jake Paul fights that are ridiculously stupid. But anybody that says, oh, it, it gives a black eye to boxing and or they call MMA out and this or that, because I really can't think of a bigger embarrassment than to lead up into this fight. Like, I got to be honest with you, the fight's in New York, right? Like, to me, I think Ryan Garcia should be at Bellevue. He should be at the hospital right now as opposed to in a ring. Like, this guy's in no mental, like, frame of mind to be fighting anybody. For the record, he was, like, uh, three and a half pounds overweight. He bet $500,000 a pound yesterday. For, he said he'd pay him $500,000 extra for every pound. Um, the, the Haney camp says that uh, Garcia paid. But the word is, actually, he didn't really technically pay. He did and he didn't. He basically had to carve up part of the contract. So he did He did lose money, for real. Um, he gave up his pay-per-view points. He gave up. Like, so, like, if you're Garcia, like, you've totally made a fool of yourself for the last, like, two months leading up to this. You you come in overweight. You You're losing money now. Like, you're literally going to have to pay Haney money out of your pocket because you didn't make weight. It's not a title fight anymore. And you're going to lose. Like, like, what positive comes out of this? I got to tell you, like, at this point, I know it would be disappointing, but if I was Oscar De La Hoya, I would pull the plug on it. I'd just say, listen, this kid's not, the, the, we, we're, we're not doing this. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? We've, we're, we know, come up with an injury, say, slipped in the bathtub coming out of the shower this morning, whatever. But, yeah, right, you know, you want to send this kid out there, okay, send him out there. Like, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a fighter, like, besides Roy Nelson. <laughs> but that was Roy Nelson shtick, right? I don't know if I've ever seen a fighter that's like sort of like more unprepared, you know, like for for a fight. And there's a reason why Haney's a 10 to 1 favorite right now. Um, So we'll get into that a little bit. But Lou, Lou wants to join us to talk NHL hockey. We're not going to talk about that boxing uh, circus. Uh, Lou wants to talk playoff hockey. And I know I remember Lou told us like two months ago or so that if the New York Islanders make the playoffs, he thinks the New York Islanders are a very dangerous team to play against. Well, the New York Islanders have made the playoffs, but they're playing against a very dangerous team and the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, We're dropping the puck tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Pacific, and then it's the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Boston Bruins on Saturday night. We'll give you our picks for every National Hockey League series. We'll give you our picks for every NBA series. I've got a bunch of best bets. We're going to hit Major League Baseball in-game tonight, UFL Week 4. Week three was the highest scoring weekend of the season and the highest scoring weekend combined in the last two years out of any of these spring leagues. Does it continue this week? We break it down with Rob Vino. Let's roll. The postseason is here. And so is four trades. The Friday Night Freak Show is the God bring it. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So, yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, 
The Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever it is, and they'll think he's ready to roll. The nominating tonight. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be a starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. sort of has letdown written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Thank you, I appreciate this. You want your one of these? I'm good, KG. You want your ginger shot? I'm good, man. I'm good. I need some positivity today. I'm trying to cover this spread, and your vibe is off, G. What's wrong with my vibe? You got to get you one of these, G. Get to sip some of this positivity in your life, and boom! You see that? Spread's covered. Thank you, mama. In a minute, G. Ha ha! Let's roll. The Friday Night Freak Show has begun on the Sports Good Radio and Television Network, Series XM Channel 159. We've got a full slate of action going on here this evening. Major League Baseball and NBA Basketball, an elimination game going on right now after the first quarter of play. Lower scoring first quarter. In-game total is currently 202.5 after 12 minutes. It's a 24-22 uh, for Sacramento. So there's still this game is still sort of in a feel-out uh, process uh, right now. The Miami Heat were victorious this evening. The Chicago Bulls, evidently the Chicago Bulls don't know the rules of basketball, and they don't know that you're allowed to take a, a two-point shot. You don't only have to take a three, as that's all that they did. They just swung it back to a three-point shot. They would miss. Miami would go down to the court score. Chicago would go up the court, take a three-point shot, miss. And it looked like Billy Donovan just basically quit uh, on you know on his team on the game and realized this just isn't going to happen uh, for us. So uh, Miami get the Boston Celtics uh, right now. We'll keep our eye on this game. For the record, I like the over two hundred two and a half right now, but it is minus one forty. Um, let's bring Steve Merrill uh, in, Cam Stewart, and Steve. Good to see you tonight. How you doing, Mister Merrill? Doing well, and um, yeah, these playoff games, we've seen crazy moves to the under. Uh, five of the six play-in games, we saw the early sharp money come under the total. Uh, most of them have cashed. The one that we didn't was Atlanta-Chicago on Wednesday. I liked the over in that game. There was two losing teams, a terrible Atlanta defense that was not playoff caliber. But yeah, it'll be interesting to game to see how much these playoff games this weekend start to move. And to put it in perspective, that Sacramento um new orleans game they played five times in the regular season because they had a quarterfinal tournament game and those those totals are all like 230 or higher all five of them so it really is remarkable how much these playoffs and defensive games uh, come into play no you're right and so the, you know the bulls and the hawks game was a track meet but even the other one steve that barely got over was when tyler hero hit a, a three-point shot at the buzzer to push it right. over the number and I'm more of an over better, so it's paining me. I'm. Uh, it's a. It's a. Uh, it's been a learning experience to see how this is playing out. 
but there's a total that I like tomorrow, and we'll start off with this, actually. The Knicks tomorrow and the Sixers. Remember, Steve, when they played last month, they played a couple of times in a week. They had a hard time cracking 70, both teams. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like, a couple of times that these teams played against each other, it was low-scoring battle. It was like basically watching the Knicks and the Heat in, in the mid-'90s all over again. And they got a total of 209 in this game tomorrow, Steve. I do like the under in game one of the Knicks and Sixers. Right, but Embiid was still out, correct, when they played those games uh, about a month or so ago? Yeah. I don't think he was back yet. Um, yeah, he, he and was. was. And New York was a little banged up as well. But, um, yeah, look, New York needs to play slow. You can't imagine they want to get in a track meet with Philly. Uh, Miami plays very slow. As you mentioned, Gabe, the only reason that game went over is because Miami, first of all, collapsed. They blew a double-digit lead against Philly, and now they play the Celtics instead of the Knicks. So that was a very important 7-8 game. Philadelphia caught a huge break point coming from behind to win that one by a point. They were getting booed at home, which isn't something new in Philly. But the jury is still out on how healthy Embiid is also. I'm hearing from a lot of sources in Philly that he's like 65% still. He, he played well the other night. But we'll keep it on it, Gabe, because, you know, with the wear and tear of like every other day in these seven-game series, um, it could come into play. I'll look at a series price in this for you, and I pointed this out yesterday. I was doing the Wager Talk TV show live, and the the line started to move on this one. Um, public books have the Knicks uh, – uh, the public books have some love to the Sixers, but the sharper books around the world started juicing on um, New York. They went from minus 110 to minus 120, minus 125 yesterday <laughs> afternoon. So I do think we have a little bit of a sharp square divide on this series. I think the public will probably be looking at Philly. I think some sharp money is coming in on New York. I don't know if there's an advantage for either team. Like, you know what I mean? From like, and I get it. We're, you know, we talk about betting and people want to get involved. The Knicks are such a big time team and it's the NBA playoffs. But is there an advantage, Steve? Like, do the Knicks have an advantage over the Sixers or the Sixers really have an advantage over the Knicks? To me, this really is a toss up series. Like, even game one, I'm hesitant. Like, I'm like, I do lean with the Knicks to win the series, but I don't love it. I don't think it's a great matchup for them. Well, first of all, before the play-in rounds were known tonight, we got the, uh, you know, the Sixers are, I'm sorry, the Celtics are obviously a huge favorite over Miami. But the other six known series that we have right now, four of those six series have a favorite of minus 140 or less. That means the dog has about a 45% chance or better in four of those other six series to win outright. And this is one of them. Like I said, it was priced minus 110 in a lot of books yesterday. A little bit of a sharp lean now towards the Knicks. But this should be maybe the best first-round series. And if Philly doesn't lose Embiid for a couple months, they might be the two seed. You know, So they're obviously a very dangerous seven seed. I think it comes down to a couple things. How healthy Embiid is. Can Embiid and Maxi stay healthy for seven games? And also, can Jalen Brunson, my quote-unquote most underrated superstar in the league, turn it on for the Knicks? I'm a big Brunson fan. I also think that Randall's one of the most overrated superstars, and him being out actually might be a positive for New York in this one. And they have OG Ananobi now, who's a big-time defensive player. Right. The Knicks are built for the playoffs. But one thing about the Sixers, and I agree as far as one thing, though, I don't trust Embiid to stay healthy. And I'll tell you right now, there's no way in hell Embiid's playing in the Olympics, all right? He's not getting through the NBA playoffs, and he's gonna, not going to no, play in the Olympics this year. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, so get, get a spot ready, guys, Team USA, okay? Yeah. He ain't, I don't know, he, like you said, Steve, every time he takes the court, you don't really know. And, but to me, it's the other guys, like Nicholas Batum the other night, couldn't miss from three, right? Uh, Tobias Harris has played well. I think he should. He makes a lot of money. But Harris has played well. Maxi is a, you know, Maxi's a star. If, you know, if he got all the shots, he'd score 25 points a night easily. So they are super talented. Nick Nurse is a really good coach. It's going to be a battle. I don't know who you're taking, Cam, to win the series. Like I said, I have a hard time picking a winner with this one. I really do. Like, they're both – they're they're evenly matched. The Sixers are talking a lot of smack uh, mm -hmm. coming into this, how they wanted the Knicks instead of the Celtics. So now they've got them. Yeah, dangerous move to uh, – yeah, you pick your opponent, Marenzi. That, that doesn't end, end well. And I'm going to tell you, I like the Knicks in this series. I just think the defense, and you talked about OG, he's going to be huge defensively. I just think the Philadelphia 76ers are going to break down. It was so really funny when we see these reports, too, and these guys, you're right. They've been very cocky, and you talk about the play. Batum was the best in his interview, Gabe. He's like, I will not do that again. I don't expect to ever get 20 points again. He's like, <laughs> in the interview part, it was, just, it was hilarious. Like, he had, like, a wicked game, but he knows. Like, you know what I mean? That's, that's random. And I know other guys can step up for Philadelphia, but I think the Knicks' defense will be too much. 
probably go the distance. I've already bet the Knicks in the series, and I like them in game one. My deal is just I have a hard time. I don't trust Embiid staying healthy for seven games, in which exactly. will be a very physical series, too. Correct. Right? The Knicks, the Knicks are going to push on them. They have Mitchell Robinson back right now. OG Ananobi is a perfect player as well to to match up with uh, with with Maxi to get under his skin to defend him a bit, and it's hard to do. I mean, you know, Maxi's so fast; he just runs right past everybody. He blows right past you. But I think OG Ananobi can slow him down a little bit. Very fun series, is like you said, Steve. For the most part, I mean, and even the Lakers series. And the Nuggets, in which the Nuggets are, you know, nearly four to one favorites, that should be a competitive series, Steve. Even though the Nuggets are nearly four to one favorites. Yeah. By the way, I wanted to point out Ojanobi. I believe they were twenty and three straight up the first twenty three games yeah. he played with them yeah. after the trade. That's real. And he missed well, that, like twenty seven games overall. due to an elbow injury. He missed yeah, over half lost. the games. Right. They've only lost like three, four times when he's actually been in a lineup, which is pretty crazy. They started it's off insane. like thirteen and zero, Steve. After the trade, <laughs> I know so everyone's like, "Ooh, we love it! Man, great stuff! That's the best." Yeah, we'll talk about talk about the Lakers after the break. But yeah, the Knicks yeah. will be really underrated for that reason. And you know what? Uh, all these Raptor players are really helping other teams. Just pass yes. off the actors, but killing it with sure the faces are. as well. <laughs> yes. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucs would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever it is, and they'll think he's ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be a starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Lucas is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In-game live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. sort of has letdown written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
<laughs> Let's roll this here, Sports Rage. I am Renzi. Pelicans and the Kings. Uh, close basketball game uh, right now. It's a little off uh, off the pace. For the record, the Mets. DJ Stewart hit a uh, hit a home run. The Mets are up one nothing on the Dodgers uh, right now at Chavez Ravine. But we got a tie basketball game, 31-31. There's seven minutes left. The in-game total is 201 and a half uh, right now. I wanted to get to this, though, actually. We got a stacked show. We got uh, Gamblu stepping up in about 15 minutes time. But you and I, Steve, spent a lot of time. Uh, you and I had a lot of fun talking about the Washington uh, team name over the years. And I asked people on Twitter today, what's the worst team name in sports, actually? We were talking about team names. And a lot of the Washington teams were coming up. People were coming back to the Commanders, the Wizards. <laughs> so Washington <laughs> kept coming up. But Utah gets the uh the 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 coyotes the coyotes keep the name they don't so utah is going with a new name these aren't like this isn't like guaranteed that it's one of these names but they did trademark these names and they they got a copyright and a trademark pending on these names right now and the owner was open about it and he said we're gonna we'll feel it out he goes there's no set date he goes if it's utah it's utah whatever he goes we're making jerseys with Utah on it right now, and we're going to figure it out. It's, it'll happen organically. Yet, yeah, this is these are the names that they they trademarked: the Utah Blizzard, Utah Venom, Utah Fury, Cam's favorite, Utah HC. Oh my God, that's so yeah, stupid! Yeah, I knew you would like that, Utah <laughs> HC. Is- Oh my God. And for the record, and let me finish for the record, and the last one, which is basically the same thing, Utah Hockey Club. Hockey Club. <laughs> Utah AC. Like Utah AC, yeah. Utah Hockey Club. Right? But I, oh, after God. everything, after everything that the, the guy said, he goes, it's going to happen naturally. We'll let the, it'll figure the process. We'll figure it out. Since that's the least of my concern right now, we're just going to start with Utah and, like, you know what I mean, go from there. And then he went back to sort of, but, you know, Utah HC is the starting point. Oh, and look at their soccer team, guys. Real Salt Lake. They seem to have a, 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 a fetish for this soccer stuff and ripping, like, off that. I'm sorry, I think Murphy. they might do it. I think they might do it, Cam. Utah HC. I think it might happen, bro. I'm going to tell you, man. Steve's it's disgusting. No, 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 no. I have more, more than this. Chance. It's horrible. You don't call it that for soccer, Steve. The MLS has already butchered the HC hockey club. First of all, HC and hockey clubs the same. Okay, Venom's stupid. Well, it is the like club to hockey in Montreal. Okay. Okay. The, the CA. Yeah, but they're real. Well, that's games. the Canadians. The and that's French. Yes, nobody calls it. Come on. Come on. Is that on. what the CH is for Canadians? Yes. Yes. I never yes. did that. Club to hockey. Yes. I never yeah. did that. I've got the fucking yeah. NST. You learned something wow. new. Games from Quebec. But I'm going to tell you this. Those names reek. Venom, roller derby team. Uh, other one, Fury. That's stupid. And the HC and Hockey Club are even worse. I'm not. I, I, I b- b- honestly, Gabe, I can't believe this is real. Blizzard by a landslide. It's a, It's not even well, close. Yeah, it's the only one that's oh, halfway God. normal. It's still terrible. Hey, Gabe, I had an idea in my head. I didn't know any of these names. I didn't know any of these names. And when you threw it to me, my first thought was ice caps. I don't know if there is an ice caps. I feel oh, like I've yeah. seen an ice caps. Before. It's not bad. You talk ice caps. Very good. I, I like that. It. That was my like first it. thought. Better than Venom? Where's the Venom? Better than I, Utah uh, Jazz. Anything's better than Jazz, also. I don't. They I like the Utah the Venom, game. but they're not. I, I'm surprised they're going. I am surprised even on the list. It's kind of mean. There's a there's like a death metal band called Venom. Venom like it's yeah. very like just sort of like wow. It's kind of like not very fr- fan like or uh family so, friendly yeah, so my, son's, totally. my son's 12 year old travel baseball game tomorrow they are the venom that is the baseball organization he plays wow. for is venom so it sounds strange to me because i picture a bad 12 year old baseball team so i'm definitely against venom Venom. plus are there a lot of snakes in salt lake city i mean that doesn't even make sense oh, yeah yeah, yeah, Venom is like, like Cam said, the roller hockey youth baseball team name. There's no question about that. Fury is so weak, I can't even tell you. Like that's that name's just that that's But they obviously like hockey club because they listed it twice and then they said that's the default one they'll go with unless they find something else. So that's like a third time they've said it. It's, yeah, but this is it's awful. This is like you and I talked about, Steve, in which you didn't like it at the time, but the Washington yeah. football team is better than the commanders. 
Oh, no, but football team was her. Uh, no, actually, I think Commanders is better. I hated football team just because it was such a default nothing nickname, and the uniforms had no logo. You it know what awful. it is? It's like Commanders these names great, like but it's HC, like HC and SC and all these things, the, the, the Washington football team. It's like new cuisine or something. It is. It's like it's they very like yuppie. it. They think they – exactly. They think, you know what? It's, it's hip. Hell. It's new. It's like HC. I, and I'm telling you, man – I could read between the lines. Like you said, Steve, they have five names, and two of them are Utah Hockey Club. Figure yeah, it out. You can tell what they're doing. They're going yeah. to Utah HC. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're thinking and long and hard it, right? about Utah HC right Didn't now. Didn't he say that's the default name on they're, top of that? So that's like a third name. They're going to regret the decision. Hockey Club or HC, it's the stupidest thing ever. You see it for soccer. Hockey teams have names. They don't have initials. Get this was my, this is my suggestion to them. And if they use it's it, lazy. I want season tickets for life. Yeah. I don't even want to go Utah there. Storm. The Utah That's Storm. Fine. Better than the ice other ones. Are storm. I like Blizzard. Ice Caps and Storm. Like Blizzard's fine, too. but I, I think of I think of a Dairy Queen milkshake when I hear Blizzard. So that's yeah. for me it's yeah. an initial reaction, right? I then agree. I think of Roller Derby and a twelve year old baseball team. So it's just like, you know, ice it's good caps. For Dairy Queen. Blizzards are good. It's delicious. Good for Dairy Queen. They're great, great, great. They are, they are delicious. The, it is making me hungry. The names, like you said, Steve, they're all the blizzard sucks. Like it just, it's whatever. There was a soccer team, the Toronto Blizzard. It doesn't work. The it just, it doesn't work. The Utah Blizzard. It doesn't roll off the tongue. It doesn't have like that sort of. It doesn't sound good. Uh, the Utah Fury sounds like a B League indoor soccer team or something like that, or an arena football league team. Brutal. Yeah, it sounds like an arena football team. Exactly. The Utah Venom is just awkward. <laughs> like you know what I mean? So like, it's just hey, sort why of like they what? Come up like, with like. Minor league baseball creative nicknames like flying squirrel. So by San Diego's getting crushed tonight, right? Toronto's up five nothing. That's a knuckleballer that was called up from Triple A El Paso Chihuahuas. I mean, get it, get aggressive, right? I mean, do something. Yeah, but you know what? Though you know they don't like that, Steve, because they do I mean, that to make money. League, those, right? it's, those franchises right. do it to sell gear, right? Cape Cape Fear Crocs, right? The uh, you know what I mean? Well, the, the, mighty, the Jacksonville the Jumbo Shrimp. The best example. <laughs> Mighty Ducks was the a good example. Shrimp. They kind of dropped the they dropped the mighty part after a decade or so, right? It has to sound so I, pro. You know what I mean? You want to you know, sort of have that pro. You know, I think the Utah Storm, Storm yeah. sounds pro. Utah Storm. Storm is fine. I like ice caps. I like or your Storm. ice caps. Those are our ideas. I like ice caps. Yeah, those are our ideas. Our boy Mark that, in Boston, that, he's a smart guy. He had a good one. I liked it, but I don't think they'll go with it. The Utah Saints. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I don't think. Well, they don't yeah, but really I don't think do. they want that latter day Jesus oh, moment. Like, like they don't want. Yeah, they're gonna be like, no, we don't want like anything religious. Like we're trying to get hipper, not more Mormon yeah. here. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like with their with the name. That's why I like veteran. That was the complete opposite nicknames. of Mormon. Yeah, EY Cougars, Utah Utes. I like those nicknames. Utah okay. State's the Aggies. I don't quite quite get that one. But Someone yeah, else had the Cougars Utah Miners. Utah. Wasn't bad. Someone sent me a tweet. Utah Miners. Yeah. I'll deal with that. Sure. I like the Utah Storm. I like your ice caps. I do. White Caps is a great right. name in the MLS, the Vancouver White Caps. You want good yeah, I names. I think maybe that's what I was thinking. I was like, I felt like there was an ice caps. Maybe White Caps is what I was thinking. So ice caps would work. Roll it. You know what? Uh, good names. Tomorrow is. I was thinking about. I was. I was handicapping a game, and I'm like, you know what? These are really cool names. You think about going head to head. The Showboats tomorrow versus the Battle Hawks. Oh, exactly, good names. Exactly. The Memphis St. Louis Showboat. Battle Hawks versus the Memphis Showboats. The Memphis Showboats Perfect. is like, the best name. It just Showboats sounds in Memphis. good. Yes. And yeah, what Memphis Showboats has always been a great nickname. Yes. It was in the original US. St. Louis Battle Hawks. That's a yeah, good yeah, name yeah, for Battle a football team. The Battle Hawks. I agree. I agree. The old USFL names were the best. Like Generals, Denver Gold. You know what I mean? They had Birmingham Bulls. Well, those were like kind of generic. These are better. Hey, no. I, I tell Showboats you, no. I, 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 I love Showboats. I love the Showboats. Yeah, that's now. The gold it was a crap name. The gold, the generals. Yeah, <laughs> like, was he on the jersey it's team? Just, you know, I don't know why you come at my ideas like they're like they're crap or whatever. What's wrong with that? Like New Jersey Generals. What's wrong with that? Philadelphia Stars. That's kind of boring, but it worked. Like what was it? There's not a bad name in that. No, it's kind of terrible. Right? Houston Philadelphia Gamblers. Stars. Houston there. Gamblers was the best. Can we agree there? Jacksonville. Houston yeah. Gamblers Houston is Gamblers. fantastic. Yeah, that yeah. definitely wins. Thank you. And case, case closed. And they're idiots because they actually merged, Steve, the, the two Houston teams. The XFL and the, the USFL merged the two of them 
and they went with the name the Houston Roughnecks instead of the Houston Gamblers out of the two. Idiots. And the, 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 the name Roughnecks sucks. You want to talk about crap names. That sucks. I, I so, agree. Steve, before we get you out of here, what do you like tomorrow on the hardwood tomorrow? What game do you like well, best? Do think, what stands out? Yeah, I do think Knicks, as far as the series, is worth a look. I like them at uh, basically pick them. And also, um, I thought it was interesting that Phoenix is favored in the series against Minnesota because I think – Minnesota might not be able to make a long run with their inexperience, but they're still a very dangerous team, came very close to being the number one seed. Um, I think Minnesota plus money is a series play. And, you know, obviously that translates probably to game one for those as well. Yeah, I don't understand that. You know what? I think Minnesota are better than they are. And, you know, that's the whole thing. People, how much do you lean on regular season matchups? Because, you know, I don't I don't think they matter as much as people think they do. Teams are completely different now in the playoffs. Right. We're talking about the tempo and, and the paces of these games. But everyone, oh, Phoenix beat Minnesota three times this year, Steve. People are hanging their hat on that. I don't buy into it too much, though. Yeah, and a lot of these matchups with the load management, the scheduling situations, you have to be very careful reading too much into the regular season, like you said. A good example. Look, the Pelicans beat uh, beat Sacramento once this year by like 33 without Zion. Yeah. I didn't have a big overreaction after with the point spread here. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Mike. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there winning majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. And that's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, the Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a friend of king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a Sealy's, whatever they do, they don't think he's ready to roll. They're nominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early the line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not, not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions. Luka is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. This sort of written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
Well, uh, the hockey season is here, and we know that there's uh, there's going to be blood spilt on the ice. There's going to be crashing and banging, and um, it all gets going tomorrow afternoon. Yet, it's it's going on right now with the Pelicans and the Sacramento Kings. These teams are really going after it. <laughs> like they just yeah. sort of have to stop the game. Reminded me when I played in the NBA Hoop It Up when Keith Van Horn had to stop my game once. Uh, like the refs, like basically just talk to everybody. Like there's everybody was pushing. It was like refs were like, "All right, guys, everyone just take a, take a breath, chill out. Let's just you know let's play basketball here." But the tensions are running high uh, right now in New Orleans, and the Pelicans are going on a run. They're up fifty-one to forty right now with about a buck left in the uh, in the first half. Uh, thanks to Steve Merrill for joining us. Let's bring in uh, Lou. Uh, let's send it to the desert right now. Desert Plains, Desert Storm in the house. Let's roll. Gamble. How you doing, Lou? As you stated, it's time to drop the puck. The quest for the cup begins tomorrow. Passion season is finally here, guys. I'm tickled to be with you and uh, share some uh, hockey insights with two guys whose opinions I totally respect. So one thing I'll say, Lou, and I appreciate that, but one thing I'll, I'll, I remember, and I remember everything, that you've been talking for months about the New York Islanders. And you t- you were like, man, said, you know, the I like the Islanders. They're going to be dangerous in the playoffs. And when you said it at the time, they weren't even in the playoffs, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> right? They weren't, True. they weren't in the playoffs uh, when you said it. They bring in Patrick Waugh. They didn't change any of the, you know, the, 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 they didn't change anybody on the team. They didn't do anything with the personnel. But Patrick Waugh and his passion lit a fire under this team. And it's hard not to play hard when you see a guy that's coaching hard. When you see a guy that's like, he's as into it as, like, no one's going to be more into a game as Patrick Waugh is. And the players, it, it's hit or miss with him. It didn't work the first time, but I think this is a big difference with Patrick where, he used to be like a severe egomaniac. I love the guy, but I know him. Like, I covered him, so I know him. Sick, crazy, like, egomaniac. I used to watch football in the same bar with him on Sundays. Really cool dude, but look what he did with Montreal. He got mad once, and he told him, never playing for you again, right? He's a hothead, and he was one of those dudes that's like, like you know the old cliche guys, great players don't make good coaches because they – why can't Morris Richard, the great Morris Richard was a coach briefly, and he couldn't understand. He goes, I don't understand why you guys can't do this. And mm-hmm. somebody told him, we're not you, Morris. Not everybody's you. <laughs> it's not that easy for us. Like, it's not the same. Brett's and the Patrick same. sort of had that sort of same. Patrick had that, like, but he was mean about it. He was like, you're terrible. And he backed off. A lot of these French Quebec coaches are nut jobs, Lou. And Patrick was a, he's from that world of let's insult everybody and like my way or the highway. And you know what happened to him? He ended up spending 15 years living in Quebec City running a junior hockey league team, Lou. This guy learned his lesson and how to adapt to the modern athlete and it's really paid off for the Islanders. I couldn't agree more. And I don't know Patrick Waugh, but I, I do know his passion and I did study him closely in that first stint of coaching. Uh, what I will say is I, I almost think, and I've not been behind closed doors, that behind closed doors, he's a bullet ricocheting off metal walls, but out in the public and in the public persona, he's completely toned himself down and refined himself. Uh, What I find amazing is that he is using the same group of of players that struggled early in this season. But he, in this relationship with Varlamov, I think has been the cornerstone and the foundation for this success that the Islanders are having. And provided that they can keep this a really tight, low-scoring series... And that's how Carolina wants to play anyway. I think the Islanders are in this series. The matchup doesn't work for them. They've been competitive uh, with them. They played uh, four times this year. The Canes beat them 4-3 in overtime. The Islanders beat them 5-4 in overtime. The Islanders beat them 5-4. And then uh, the Canes most recently beat them 4-1. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I'll ask you, Lou, and 
like a good example is the Vancouver Canucks. And we'll get to that series after, but the Canucks are three and zero against the Predators this year. So what? Two exactly. of the games were in October, and one of them was in December. Right. So, like, what does it really mean, right? Mm-hmm. And so we can say, well, the Islanders, Islanders beat them earlier. I mean, they just played recently, and it was four one Canes. But the Otters have played with them. But poor Islanders, Lou. The Carolina Hurricanes are a damn good hockey team. I agree with everything you're talking about with the Islanders. But the Canes are just a damn good team. The Canes are just a damn good team, and uh, I, I do feel for the Islanders. That said, the menus that are offered to us, at least in Arizona, between the MGMs and the and the Caesars and the DraftKings, etc., where I can look at series and get the Islanders. Hold on, we're on the and, Friday Night Freak Show. MGM is the only book in the world. Uh, but uh, I love it. Uh, yeah, just, I love, yeah, just MGM. Just, only, on, only on Fridays, though. I will, only on I will, Fridays. I, it's a Friday I night will, thing. But, <laughs> I will remember that. So, no, so, I'm just and, and, kidding. And, but I was going to ask, so what are you doing? I, Islanders plus two and a half series handicap type thing? One and a half? Are you going to do a it. series handicap? Love, 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 the two, love the two and a half. Now, I got to pay some juice with that. But I'm liable to take it with other series that I think are going to be tight. I think Boston and Toronto is going to be tight. I actually lean a little to Toronto if we're going to keep it in the East. So Toronto plus one and a half, Islanders plus two and a half. I love that. I love the fact that they're going to allow me the freedom of not only betting series in games and getting games and giving one and a half and two and a half, but that they'll let me parlay those together. I, I feel very well equipped to compete against the sports books under that kind of a of a setup. Yeah, I'm looking. I agree. I'm looking back here, and in fact, the last six times that they played, you go back to last year, these two teams, the last six times that they played, only once was it not decided by one goal. Five of the last six games, so it's like two years of action almost. Like mm-hmm. I said, we had a 5-4 game, 5-4 game, 4-3 game, 2-1 game, 3-2 game, and Carolina won the last time 4-1. You talked about it, Lou. The the, the Islanders are going to want to play a low-scoring game. They're going to try to win these games 2-1 if they can. I think 3-2 will sort of be a common score, and that's what I kind of feel coming for tomorrow. I think the Canes will escape and win like 3-2. Maybe they'll score that empty net or 4-2, but I think the Islanders can compete with them. I'm not quite as enthusiastic about them as you two are, only because I think Carolina are just that much better than they are, right? I, 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 I just think it's a great. bad matchup. I just think it's a bad, it's unfortunate for the Islanders that they have to deal with the Canes, but it is what it is. That's that's who they have to play. They got to play them. To your earlier point, um, watching Patrick Waugh live, he used to snap, and he took a critical timeout against the Canadians when they're down, and they, they, they listened to this guy. Another thing is he's ch- totally changed. You said it, Gabe. The guy was a psychopath. He did everything right. And if you notice, since Patrick Waugh has taken over from the, uh, the old coach uh, Lambert, look at the, look what Paul Mary's doing. Bo Horvat was a ghost. That guy was an absolute ghost. He's been playing. Guys who have been in this league, like uh, old, old guys are stepping up big time and his relationship with the goaltender has been great, too. We talked about him and Barlamov. Barlamov's been playing his ass off, and so he's taken the starting job from Sorokin. You're right, Gabe. Let's call it out for what it is. If we look at total talent, Carolina's better. But the Islanders are very, very close, and we know a hot goaltender can steal any type of game or series. So I'm with Lou. I think this thing goes the distance. I think it I... goes five, but the, maybe six. Can the Islanders get two wins? I think that's sort of their ceiling. My own personal opinion. Carolina has had struggles at home in the playoffs. There's tremendous expectation. All the pressure is going to be on them. Uh, Overall, I don't view the Islanders as a loose team, but I think they enter this series loose. And already we've seen that they opened Islanders plus 180. They're plus 190 by tomorrow. They'll be plus 200. Only one way for me to take this, and that's with the Islanders in game one. I think the Islanders, plus, listen, the Islanders plus a puck and a half tomorrow is minus 150. I think that's definitely in play. Put it this way, guys. There's two games tomorrow. Does at least one of them go to overtime? It wouldn't surprise me if they both went to overtime tomorrow. Agreed, Gabe. Another thing, too, is you brought up a great point about the Canucks winning. If you look, Boston has beaten the Leafs 
four times this year. They've all been close games. And a lot of the time, you know, guys were missing and stuff like that. I don't care. Exactly what you said. I couldn't care less about the regular season record. This is a different time. There are different players on the team and after acquisitions and stuff. And I think it's motivation for the team that lost those games to show up and to to deliver. I think they're going to be – that's a great bet, Gabe. I, I believe one game does go to overtime. I would not be shocked if both went to overtime tomorrow. Close hey, 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 guys, I saw a line on a – sports book uh and it was how many first round games will go to ot the the number was 10 and a half so to me that seemed like a really high number um so i wouldn't be surprised if both of these go tomorrow was it just a minus 110 play so it was just a straight straight odds type thing and now it's just just an over under bet that's a great question. The, the juice wasn't prohibitive either way, or I'd have remembered it. So it was close. Yeah, so, yeah, to okay. And so we've talked about this. Our boy, I don't know if you know Carmine uh, Bianco. Nice guy. You'd like him, Lou. Um, I, know, I know the name and yeah. know who he is, sure. He's a super nice dude, but he's he's a real deal. Like, he bets big units, this guy. And he goes into, like, playoffs and stuff, you know, World Cup soccer with a plan, and he sticks to it. You know what I mean? He's like, I'm going to bet that there's going to be a goal in the first 10 minutes of every soccer game in the World Cup at plus eight. You know what I mean? Like, And he'll stick to it. But, and me and I've done this. We've done it a few years. It takes discipline, and it's hit or miss, Lou. But he basically plays every playoff game to go to overtime. Right? And, you know, let's, so let's see what the consensus odds are tomorrow for this. Like, so the, the listen, the Islanders and the Canes, this legit could go to overtime. Big time. Like I don't like th- this legit. If, if this it goes, legit. If, if, if it goes the Islanders' way, I think. However, if the Islanders slip on ice, so to speak, if if, if there's any four to one games, if there's any, well, they four are to on ice, games, Lou. So it could be on ice. <laughs> the thing about if the Islanders any... is, you guys know they can't come back from like deficits of overtime. That's that's not yeah, the way they're built. If there's a if there's a four difficult. to one game, it's or it's going to be Carolina. Yeah. yeah. The yeah, four to one yes. is not their game. No matter, what, they won't win a four to one, and they surely can easily lose a four to one. Yeah. But my point is, it's plus three hundred that game to go to overtime, and then the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple. I just want to see like sort of the consensus. What are they dealing here with these plus three hundred? Yeah. Gotta so be once the again, same, right? Yeah. So once again, plus three hundred here. So maybe you get plus three twenties. I've noticed they've lowered it a little bit in the regular season. You get a little bit of a higher odds. But at that rate, guys, you got these two games tomorrow, and then you attack on on Sunday with the overtimes, uh, plus 300 with those four games. Let's see if we're profitable or not after the first weekend. Right? Well, like, I can, I can Colorado, tell you Colorado, Winnipeg place. has overtime written all over it. Nashville, Vancouver could go to overtime. Tampa, Florida. If I had to bet Florida one could. game is going to overtime, I would say Tampa and Florida. It's going to overtime. Agree. 100% agree. Yeah. Like if you pick one of the blue, I'd be like Tampa, Florida. 4-4 four, four in OT. 5-4 exactly. winner. <laughs> Sounds that way. It's when he swung it easy at three-quarter golf swings, and he pretty much hit his number all the time. Dude, but when he hit something full, he hit it 20 yards over the greens at times. He's like, what are you doing? He's just smiley, happy, and a freakish athlete golf robot that's going to be right there when he majors for the next 10-plus years. It's amazing. Did you say he was smiling or smiley? Only on Sports Grid. Your gut says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows that QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. The Philadelphia 76ers, who are the second best team in this Eastern Conference by a mile when Joel Embiid is healthy. That's just what they are. So now, if Giannis isn't available, 
The Bucks would be dogs in the series. He ain't sleeping on that air mattress anymore. He's got a regular king size bed, a, 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 a possipedic, whatever they call it, a ceilings, whatever it is, they don't think. He ready to roll. Denominating tonight. Game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. People that bashed him will be eating their words this year. Pretty heavily favored to be a first-round pick, minus 400 earlier this week. But that's not the surprise. If you're drafting J.J. McCarthy in the first half of the first round, you clearly believe not only is he a starter, he's going to be your starter for years to come. But a popular bet was under three and a half wide receivers in the first round. The tape doesn't lie, baby. Only on Sports Grid. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. The early line. Magical and historic season in Lincoln, Nebraska continues. He is the best player in the NBA, but also in the biggest moments where the national media is watching. Newswire. Something that we have never seen happen before with one of the iconic coaches in the game. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team covers. It's automatic. It's every time. Not not sometimes. It's every time. Game time decisions is actually far more dangerous from three on the road this year than at home. This game here tonight, you may want to consider taking as many points as humanly possible. In Game Live, prime time. We got not one, but two coaches fired systems in place. Sports Rage this Late sort Night. sort of has let down, written all over it. It's going to be hard to match the emotion that they played with the other night. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. So 54 to 45 at the half right now. Second half coming up. Pelicans with the lead. They were down early. I had the feeling they were going to just sort of the tug of war would go their way. And we'll see if they're able to hang on now. In game total right now at the half is 203 and a half. 203 and a half. All right. So we're talking hockey right now. We got Gamble in the house uh, with us. And Lou, you're, you're talking about liking the Toronto Maple Leafs, leaning with the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm not, I don't like to overreact. And. If a team loses game one, it's not the end of the world. I get it. It's not a, um, you know, I got into this years ago in an epic debate on the air once with a host about the term must win. And it's not a must win until it's an elimination game. I get it. But each team is different, right? It's not the end of the world if some teams lose game one of the series. If the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to beat the Boston Bruins, they need to win game one. Like, it's, there's so much that goes into it. They always lose to the Bruins. The Bruins are in their head. The Bruins basically wanted the Leafs. And and the pressure around the Toronto Maple Leafs is so enormous compared to other teams. They're not the only ones under a lot of pressure. But it's insane. The, the panic that'll set, set in if the Leafs lose tomorrow, especially poorly, like the sky will fall. There'll be questions about the goalie. You can fire the coach. They're going to hit the panic button quick in Toronto if things don't work out. If they win the first game, then they're going to start booking Bay Street for a parade uh, in two months, right? <laughs> they, but they've got to win game one. I really believe this. And I think the Leafs can win the series. I don't think that much of the Bruins. I think the Bruins are very beatable. But I'm telling you guys that we'll get Cam and Lou's take on the other side. The Leafs need to win game one. They they need to steal home ice because the fact of the matter is the Leafs don't even have much of a home ice advantage. They can charge $8,000 a ticket all they want. Those people that are paying for those $8,000 tickets don't scream. They don't pound the glass. They don't have any impact on the building at all. They're too busy eating sushi. Yes. <laughs> True comment. 